Hey, this is Matt McLean, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use a cool guitar amp plugin on drums, on MIDI drums in Logic to be specific. Um, you know, I've, I remember seeing people use uh, Sans amps, uh, like the PSA-1 on outboard gear uh, way back in the day, and uh, definitely when, when plugins became prevalent, uh, Amp Farm and all the, the cool ones after that, you know, people started using them on other things like bass and and vocals and drums instead of guitar. So I got the idea, well, you know, here's this cool new one. I wonder if it sounds good. And it does. And the reason why is um, this particular plugin, this Scuffum set of guitar amps, has um, a Dumble guitar amp model in it. And the Dumble is sort of the holy grail of tone for guitar. And the reason why is it does clean and semi-broken up tones really, really well. And it has some magic with the envelope or the transient response. Um, that, that translates really well to your fingertips when you're playing, um, but also for drums. So let's give this um, track a listen without anything. It just has some these, um, I don't know, an EQ and a compressor automatically loaded in here. But this is just a standard uh, loop that I made with Drummer. It's just MIDI drums. Okay, cool. Kind of thin, uh, not bad, but um, let's go in here and add the scuffum. And it knows where the money is because it loads the uh, the one that we're looking for. There are four amps in here now, um, but the Duke is the is the Dumble model. So uh, one thing that it does is it loads a patch with all of the knobs turned down. So you got to get in and turn these things up. Uh, be super careful. The mids and the trebles are super overhyped. Sound great on guitar, terrible on drums. So you got to keep these things way down, otherwise it sounds really thin and papery. And then uh, the gain is, is definitely where the magic is, uh, somewhere at the sweet spots between 9 o'clock and noon. And then we're not going to use the overdrive setting here. This is clean and overdrive, so make sure this, not, this little switch is down. And then we're just going to engage the boost and the bright here. And um, let's give it, give it a listen. Okay, maybe something in there. So I've got all these top ones engaged. Um, and then there's there's some advanced. Um, settings over here so you can change the sag of the power amp this is the kind of thing that will especially if you have a, a fill or something uh, the earlier notes in the fill will have more of an attack and then they'll become more compressed as the the uh, power amp run <laughs> runs out of power temporarily and then you can change um, a little bit of high cut and where your your presence frequency is so you'll we'll turn that up a little bit and then overdrive voicing we're not using the overdrive so that doesn't really matter and <clears throat> there we go cool so yeah, this is pretty rough but it sounds really cool uh, for adding a little bit of grit so it's definitely not as as hi-fi and three-dimensional uh, as w is with it disengaged let's go back and forth but it sounds magic in a mix. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I haven't gone over all the cool features. Um, this one is not really intuitive, but if you hold down Command and click on this bottom output rack, you can add some other devices. So one thing that's really cool is um, this little convolution function, which is basically uh, something that allows you to load speaker simulators in here. So there are some really famous uh, ones in here, and some of their own models too. I'm just going to go with a with a vintage two. This one seems to work for me pretty well. And you have to engage uh, the cabinet, otherwise nothing will come out. And we'll listen to it. So that sounds terrible by itself, but the the real magic is you can run two cabinets in conjunction. 
So if we turn this other one on here, um, you can blend. Uh, I'm going to go direct on this one and and blend it with this actual speaker cabinet. So one little button that you have to select is this one. I think it's like a phase switch flip. Otherwise, it'll sound terrible. So if you select one of these other um, speakers, then you can go in and change the from a dynamic to a ribbon, which is kind of cool. There we go. And there are secondary EQ functions too. So we can maybe turn the bass up here. And one thing uh, that you'll notice is it's in mono, which kind of sucks, um, but there are a couple workarounds. So one is we can use the same add device function and we can drop a uh, room reverb in there. How about a medium hall? There's some other ones. Maybe a studio a, a little bit smaller here. And there's not enough spread on that one. Let's go back to our medium hall. Okay, so that can add a little bit of spread. Um, and then you can ch mix and match the uh, volume levels of the, the two uh, cabinets. This one is loaded with just direct, and then this one has a mic and speaker. So you can see there are tons of variables. You can just get lost in this slant. Um, and then once you are <laughs> massage all of your controls to the point you like, you can store it as a uh, preset by hitting store as. So I'm just going to go into a preset that I made already. And let's see, called drums, surprisingly. So you can see it was actually pretty close to the what I pulled up. And yeah, this one had used that vintage IR. And then uh, let's give it a listen. Turn the gain up a little bit. So you might want to pause it here and just start as a jumping off point with these settings. Notice how extreme they are. The mid and the treble are turned almost off. You wouldn't do this if you're using it for guitar. Um, but obviously it, it works for drums. And let's show you one other way to deal with that problem of it being mono because it just thinks you're a guitar plugging in. You can add another track. And I'm just going to option drag my MIDI stuff over there and spread that one to the right and this one to the left. So if you need, need things in stereo, um, that will fix that problem. Uh, I actually kind of like my drums <laughs> in mono a little bit. They, you know, if you're sitting 10 feet away from any drums, they're basically in mono anyway, with a little bit of room reflection. So how does this sound in a mix? I have this other track. But you'll see here, I used a bunch of um, basic Apple loops to put this together and then um, I have my drummer, and this one, I used a little bit of channel EQ on it just to bring up some of the, the highs that were missing from using the speaker cabinet, which really knocks a lot of the highs off. But otherwise, yeah, I disengage the compressor, and it's just S gear, and there is no logic reverb in there, really. Um, let's give it a listen. This is without it. With it. Okay, so you, you'll you notice it's, it's a little maybe overhyped um, in this uh, three, three to four K range. So maybe I'll suck some of this out. Um, the guitar amp, tends to do that <laughs> so you might, that's one place of potential trouble um, but um, that should sound pretty good and then notice how flat the drums sound when you take off the, the scuff them 
you know they're not bad they're just kind of hi-fi but it, the way that the the transients respond with all the other um, tracks in here so it, it, on my master block I just have a really basic adaptive limiter and then this is that free TDR um, feedback compressor which is awesome and free and I just have the, the default glue compression on and that's it so let's go into this um, the actual scuff them and I'll tweak the gain a little bit so we'll see what what happens as I turn it up so it's, by itself it's it's maybe too distorted up over past noon but uh, in the mix it kind of works <laughs> and when you turn it off, it just becomes so not three-dimensional. So it's kind of weird. Uh, you didn't even notice that this track was in mono. Um, yeah, it was in mono. I just had a little bit of the, the built-in um, compression from the, or not compression, but uh, room reverb from the, the S gear. And I actually <laughs> had it running before the, uh, the cabinets. So I don't even think it was in stereo. So you can switch these, switch the order of the reverb and the cabinet things. But I had it back here. That probably wasn't the first thing that jumped out at you. So there you go. This is the Scuffum Guitar Amp Simulator on MIDI drums. It is magic. Um, I, I'm in love with it. Your guitar player friends will love you if you have it and you invite them over and let them plug in because all the amps sound great on guitar. But this Dumble model is just, it's money. Um, and in terms of cost, keep an eye out because they will, they'll drop the price periodically, but it's less than a hundred bucks on the scale of, um, the guitar rigs out there that do similar things. You know, they're two to 3000 bucks. So it's like a 20th or 30th of the cost. Uh, definitely a, a worthwhile, um, plugin. And I haven't even gotten into the bass using it on other tracks and synths so maybe uh, another tutorial but in the meantime have fun with this one When I first came to Pyramind, I, I had searched the forums and I had searched online, I had read magazines, I had talked with people, but it wasn't enough. What I needed to do was I needed to watch someone mix, start from scratch and make their way up to a professional project. I take them through all the steps and break it down piece by piece. I want them to understand how sound interacts in the environment, number one. Number two, I want them to understand how instruments behave in a room, how to capture those instruments. Here's a microphone. What does a microphone go to? Here it is in a real world environment. Now let's go back to the classroom and dissect that. After a certain amount of time within the core program, you have access to the studios, right? And you have access to the microphones. And you have access to just bring in whoever you want and record. The first two Tumbleweed Wanderers EPs, they were both uh, completely tracked here. I brought my band in. We set up drums, you know, did overdubs. Uh, had other Pyramind students on board as engineers. And uh, we had a really, really good time tracking those songs. There's a lot of hands-on experience. You get to see bands get recorded. You get to be involved with setting up the mics, the miking techniques you know, the compressors, how everything in a studio flows. It's good to have that, that knowledge and the hands-on experience with the professionals that have, that have done that kind of work. There's no shortage to what you can do. It's a supportive environment that says, here is a space where you can be creative and mess up. And not only will we not judge you for messing up, we'll applaud you in those efforts. Mm -hmm. 